All personnel not directly involved in the convoy operation may stand behind the barriers. All personnel not directly involved in the convoy operation may stand clear and stay behind the barriers. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful show. People would give thousands of dollars to see what we've seen. Just to see it roll out all completely done, you know. First time we've ever seen it away from the scaffolding. It's a big difference. It, lo it looked like a, a newborn bird. It's beautiful now. I want to see it fly. At the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Columbia, the world's first true spaceship, moves to the launch pad. Its powerful new engines have been tried out one at a time on a test bed. Now, in a last critical test, they will be fired all together on the ship. engines will hurl it up into orbit. Its wings will let it glide back down to Earth. And then, unlike any craft before, it will be able to rocket again into space. Launch is in 49 days. John Young is commander of Columbia's test flight. Robert Crippen is the pilot. They're both graduate engineers, fighter pilots, test pilots, and have come through the tough weeding out that qualifies astronauts. They were chosen as first crew for Columbia three years ago, and since then, they've been studying and practicing for the first flight. Bob Crippen hasn't been in space yet. John Young's a veteran. He's been up there four times, logging more than 500 hours, 71 of them on the moon. Not so long ago, mankind was stuck on Earth. Now, flying is easy for us. The purpose of Columbia is to make space as available to us as planes have made the air. Bye. 
was on the moon that John Young heard that the shuttle program was approved. Hey, John, this is perfect with the limb and the rover and you and, and uh, Stone Mountain and the old flag. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Okay, here we go, a big one. Off the ground, one more. <laughs> This looks like a good time for some good news here. The House Got passed uh, the space budget yesterday, which includes a vote for the shuttle. Wonderful. The country needs that shuttle mighty bad. You'll see. Nine years later, Columbia, the first shuttle, is ready to go. But there are worries. Some of its most vital components are new and untried like the blanket of tiles that'll protect it from the fierce heat of re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The press has been watching anxiously. Uh, have there been any occasions when, uh, when Mr. Young has had to, uh, I don't know how to phrase it more delicately, reassure you as to the, the safety of the endeavor? Uh, <laughs> no, Actually, he reassures me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't have the capability of repairing the tiles, but if something should happen to the tile, is there anything at all that you can do? Oh, the tiles? Tiles are in good shape. <laughs> We're not gonna have to repair tiles. They're fixed. Hey, Jules, let's wait for the mic. It's still not completely clear to me whether or not you can abort with the ej ejection seats during the burn of the solids. You just pulled a little handle. <laughs> John, I think you kind of talked around the question of what happens if you have a serious tile problem. What happens if you have a serious tile problem? How serious is the tile problem? I think you're a better judge of what would be a serious tile problem than anyone here. Well, if you don't have any tiles on the bottom, the vehicle's going to burn up. If you have a lot of tiles on the bottom, the vehicle won't burn up. You can lose a tile in a certain area, a single tile, and I don't think it'll do anything to you. My personal opinion is. I've heard people say there's going to be a zipper effect. Well, there really isn't a zipper effect. Each one of those tiles is put on individually, and they're designed four to five times the strength that they need for the dynamic pressure they're going to see. Okay, let's take two more questions and then close it. Is it fun to be an astronaut? Is it fun to be an astronaut? That is a very good question, and the answer is yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you betcha. Yes. It really is. And I don't think you could do it unless it was fun. This is the egress training down to Cape, and this is uh, how they were showing us how to take the slide wire down into the uh, bunker area down there, and uh, they explained to me how to do this. Of course, I'm very nervous about that because <laughs> I thought they were going to turn us loose. The slide wire is a quick escape route in case there's trouble just before the launch. This is a couple of sandbags in there. That shows you what kind of trip it'll be. Once you get down there, you can either go into a bunker or you can climb into the uh, M13 tank and drive out through the side gate. Imagine uh, being on a space crew and getting to learn how to drive a tank. What you do, what you do is you drive this thing up this road here and you see that uh, fence over there, you just go right through the fence. Columbia's flight will be the first time a crew will be aboard an untested rocket. Every foreseeable emergency, such as an abort into a Florida lake, is plotted and rehearsed again and again. plus 30 minutes. The checklist has take anti-motion sickness medication. Is that a crew option or a, a request based on an assumption that an ounce of prevention is better than a bag of upchuck? Commander Young, as you know, has uh, had a lot of uh, space experience and uh, has never had even stomach awareness. So uh, we uh, feel he is uh, not in need of medication. Uh, since this is uh, 
Pilot Crippen's first uh, flight, uh, he's going to uh, take it as an ounce of prevention. Uh, we're, uh, Bob and I are about all ready to fly this thing. Uh, we get another hop in the SDA or to spruce everything up a little bit, and uh, we're really looking forward to the flight, and we hope that everything will allow us to go on Friday. It sure looks good for that right now. Two computers are not interconnecting. It has never happened in tests. Haven't had any other uh, input that would lead us uh, towards any other course of action. This is shuttle launch control. During the, uh, the countdown, we have been not able to get the computers talking to each other properly. At the present time, we have terminated our launch attempt for today and will reschedule for no earlier than Sunday morning at 6.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Shuttle Launch Control. here in the front. Can you tell us how the astronauts were affected by their long wait inside the capsule yesterday and what their spirits are today in preparation for tomorrow's launch? Well, I don't, uh, I think they were as disappointed as all of us were, but I don't think physically they had any problem. I talked to John Young uh, well, a couple hours after we scrubbed and uh, he was in very good spirits and he said, uh, of course, he's, a, he's an old veteran and he said, George, uh, 
Chuck C thinks going to happen. We know that, uh, and uh, we're ready to go to Mars. I think their spirits are still good. Through you today, we all feel as giants once again. Once again, we feel a surge of pride that comes from knowing we are the first and we are the best, and we are so because we are free. For all Americans, I ask and I thank you and a thousand of others who have worked to make this day possible. May God bless you, and may God bring you safely home to us again. Thank you the A message from President Reagan which began, you go forward this morning, a daring enterprise, and you take the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. T-minus one minute, 20 seconds, and counting. We can see the purges of the main engines uh, as we prepare for ignition. T-minus one minute, 10 seconds, and counting. Liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. T-minus one minute, mark, and counting. Flight. Flight. Is the Lila problem the entire S band or just ranging? It's just the tracking data, flight, just the tracking data. But it's everything, angles, ranging? Everything. Okay, great right, flight. T minus 40 seconds and counting. The development flight instrumentation recorders are on. T minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant sense sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, we run from the engine start. Here, TNC. We look good, Mike. Guidance. Looking good. Rob, go. Booster, go. Okay, you dumping work, Jack. Looking okay. Yeah, it looks good. Capcom going over the hill. We see uh, two good ones. We'll see them at Madrid. Configure LOS. Columbia, Houston. Uh, we have 40 seconds to LOS. Configure LOS. You're looking good, burning over the hill. We'll see you at Madrid.
Early in the flight, the doors of the payload bay are checked. If the doors get stuck open, it'll be impossible to return to Earth. They work fine, but what they reveal is worrying. Okay, uh, what camera are y'all looking at right now? Uh, do you know? Roger, we're looking at out the forward camera. Okay, we want to show y'all. We do have a, uh, a few tile missing off, off of the uh, starboard pod. Uh, it's got basically what looks appears to be three uh, tile and some smaller pieces. And off the port pod, uh, looks like... I see one full square and uh, looks like a few little triangular shapes that are missing and uh, we're uh, trying to put that on TV right now. Roger, Crip, we can see that good. In the judgment of mission control, the damage is not critical, but nobody can be sure that tiles aren't missing on Columbia's underside. If the shuttle works as hoped, we'll be able to bring up into orbit better satellites and even take them back down for repairs. In zero gravity, we'll be able to make new materials, pure medicines, alloys, crystals, perhaps tap solar power, build space stations. And here outside the veil of Earth's atmosphere, we can operate scientific instruments like telescopes that let us look more deeply into the universe We are 170 miles up. Columbia's on its back. That's the famous Mount Fuji in Japan. thousand-foot-high Tiferine dunes of Algeria. Irrigation canals in the Sacramento Valley. The Himalayas, the highest mountains on Earth. historical event, right? Enough space out here anyway. Now Columbia will try to glide back down from space. There's no going around for a second try. The landing site is Edwards Air Force Base, where there's lots of room for error. This is Mission Control. Box one has lots of signal now. Columbia is in the proper attitude for deorbit. After the deorbit maneuver, John Young will pitch Columbia down and bring it to uh, entry attitude. At an elapsed time of two days, five hours, 15 minutes, this is Mission Control Houston. I got to see it. Why? Well, I went down to Florida twice, saw the rockets go up in the daytime and one at night. So I just had to see it. Why did the chicken cross the road? Why are we sitting in the middle of the desert? It's beautiful. It's enjoying it. We're yes. enjoying it. We're waiting for the space shuttle. I'm here because I'm American. I'm so glad John let me have a day off. Nice. I get here early. Yes, John Young, goodness. personally, if he saw this. Bunch of happy people. Everybody's out having a good time, no problems at all. In moments, Columbia will dive down into the intense heat of reentry. Only John Young and Bob Crippen will know if their shield of protective tiles is working. The burning air around them will block all radio communication. In the life and death minutes that follow, there will be only silence. Okay, Columbia, everything looks perfect going over the hill. Nice and easy does it, John. We're all riding with you. 
Chase planes are taking off now at Edwards. Here in the control center, the backup crew for this mission, astronauts Joe Engel and Dick Truly behind the Capcoms. The uh, convoy crew is all ready to go out there. They're the crew that will save the orbiter and uh, help with the uh, power down. Houston's here. How do you read? Plan four, and we're done uh, Mach 10.3 at 180 AS. And we couldn't agree more, John. Your state vector's good. We've got the good data in house. Okay, I'll let you know what the state is nominal. In fact, how do I look exactly nominal? Columbia's reentry expected to produce a mild sonic boom centered a few miles west of Edwards Air Force Base. What a way to come to California. Woo. In fact, how do I still look perfect right on the nominal? Fido says it couldn't be any better. Nine thousand. Two hundred eighty knots. Everything looks real good. Five thousand two ninety. Six hours, 20 minutes, 52 seconds. And as Columbia's main gear touched the lake bed, the flight director's instructions were prepare for exhilaration.
uh, this is Susie. <laughs> Best thing that ever happened to me. It was a really tremendous mission uh, from start to finish. Crippen is uh, one of the hardest workers I know, and he carried me through that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we've got a fantastic and remarkable capability here. We're really not too far, the human race isn't, from going to the stars. <laughs> you know, uh, when you ride a launch vehicle, the future of the standard launch vehicle of the United States of America, if it doesn't work right, if all those engines doesn't work right, you don't get very far down range. <laughs> well, the space shuttle worked perfectly. It was a beautiful thing. We really have something here. I saw a, uh, a newspaper headline that uh, expressed it far better than I could. It showed the space shuttle orbiter, and it said that the dream is alive again. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> There's still one more hurdle, the most important one of all. Columbia returns to the Kennedy Space Center to prove that it can do what it was designed to do, to go up again into space.